Simple cardboard and plastic. Who would have thought they could help you with your sewing? It can help you get crisp corners on your binding, help you choose your fabric, and save time on marking and measuring, and so much more. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. If you're new to my channel, I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. Well, cardboard and plastic, most of this is upcycled. I like to use old cereal boxes, but you can use old greeting cards or just cardstock. Uh, for the plastic, sometimes I use mylar sheets. You can use cutting mats from the dollar store, or you can even use old plastic lids. You want to use a material that is stiff enough to hold its shape, so like this. But then when you roll it, it's pliable enough to not crack. And in some of these instances, you're not going to want it too thick. This template I have had in my toolbox for over two years. It's just as valuable as my expensive scissors. I use it to mark the 45 on my binding strips, but I also use it to get those crisp corners on my binding. For this tool, you will need a strip of template, whether it be cardboard or plastic, two and a half inches thick and it should be at least five inches in length. Mine is 12 inches. You're going to measure in two and a half inches from the right side and mark a vertical line. Then you are going to cut from the top of this line down to the bottom right corner. Be sure to double check that this line is 45 degrees. So first, I use this tool on my binding strip. Because it's two and a half inches wide, I just line it on the bottom of my strip point in the corner and then I make sure that the top strip is in line with that two and a half inch mark. And then I mark. It makes fast work of a lot of binding strips. Next, I use it when I'm actually sewing on the binding. I actually mark the edge of this tool at the quarter inch mark, and I use it to mark where I need to stop. Now to get that nice sharp corner, you need to flip the fabric on a 45 degree, then fold it back perpendicular to the seam, aligning that fold with the edge of the quilt. Now it's fairly easy to get the top fabric to do this but it's much more difficult to get the bottom fabric to play nicely. So let's use this binding tool. Align your template along the edge of the fabric with the point in the corner of the quilt. Now make your 45 degree fold over the edge of the template. Now remove the tool and then we are going to place it with the opposite side in the corner of the quilt. So we are aligning the corner of the tool with the corner of the quilt and then fold this back against the template. I like to use a couple of clips here to help hold it in place. A couple along the side and one in the corner of these folds. And when you turn this inside out, it should be crisp. Now on the other side, as you're turning it over, if you're having any difficulty getting that nice 45 degree fold, use this tool again to tuck in that underside of that fabric so it falls nice and crisply. When using a paper piece pattern, you're constantly folding that, that paper back and it's very hard on its own to get that line completely straight. Simply take your template with a straight edge and lie it along the line and fold the paper over this. Not only does it give you a straight line, but that extra profile gives a really nice edge for my add a quarter ruler to butt up against for better and more accurate cutting. And honestly, I use the exact same tool that I use in step one for paper piecing. So I guess it's a three in one tool. Wasting fabric just drives me crazy. So when I saw this really cool tool that Irina at Sugar Redo came up with, I had to share it. It looks like this and it cuts down my wastage from this to this. And how do you use it? I'll let Irene at Sugary Do tell you how. I'll put a link down in the notes to her video. So how do you know what fabrics to put and where? Having a set of cutout templates in different sizes and shapes will help. I make mine at a cereal box cardboard. I have a set of them in one inch, two inch, three inch, five inch, ten inch sizes. I also have them in triangles and flying geese shapes. Not only is it cheap and up recycling, 
the desaturated mid-value color on the back side of the cereal box doesn't compete with the colors in the fabric. So that beautiful, big, bold fabric that you're admiring can look very different. Cut down to a one inch size or a five inch size. When you use these templates, you can see whether your fabrics are directional. And if you're cutting multiple pieces of the same fabric, will you get consistent results? This way, when you audition your fabrics, you can look at them with a more critical eye. Another thing that I have a hard time dealing with is repetition. So if I have to measure fabric more than twice for marking, I'm thinking about a faster, easier way. Sometimes it's marking lines, like I showed you before in the binding strip tool. Maybe it's a snowball block or even more complex marking, like I showed you in my video for eight at a time Mary's triangles. But sometimes you just need to mark points like in my Stash Buster 4 video where I had to mark a block at a certain height just to keep a consistent line across the quilt. So a good marking template requires two things, points or lines for easy reference and a notch or edge for easy marking. From the quilt that I made for my husband, when I was quilting it, I had to hit the center of the block. So I made this simple template that aligned with the sides so I could easily mark the center of the block that I could align my quilting ruler to. So there's all sorts of different places where you can apply it to. Just one more note here. When you're making templates for marking, you need to know where your sew line is. So normally when you're cutting your template, you cut it perfectly on the sew line. And then your drawn line is going to be slightly to the side of this. Where do you actually sew? Do you sew on the line? Do you sew to the left of the line? Do you sew to the right of the line? There is no exact answer for this because it depends on the width of your marker. It depends on the size of your needle and your thread and your fabric. So always do a test piece so you can make adjustments to ensure your accuracy. Sometimes you need a long edge folded over nice and straight as when you're doing finished seams on a tablecloth or on table napkins. Take a template with a straight edge. The length of template that you're going to use for this will depend on the length of your finished project. If you are doing a really long straight edge, you're gonna want a longer template. If you're working on small pieces or rounded edges, you're going to want a tiny. I mark the depth of the fold that I'm looking for on the template. So on your ironing board, you're going to place your template on the fabric with a ruler right next to it. So your first fold, you want slightly smaller than your second fold. So if you're doing a quarter inch fold like I am, you're going to want your first fold to be just slightly less than that. So maybe 3 16 So you're going to mark on the ruler 3 16 and butt your template up against it and then you're going to do a finger fold and then place your iron on top. Now be careful, if you're using plastic, you want to make sure that this does not melt under the heat of the iron. Once the whole edge is pressed, repeat it again with your ruler at a quarter of an inch. When you fold the fabric over, it should touch the line on your template. Finger press with your fingers, then press with your iron. It makes a nice, clean edge. It can help you stuff pillows and toys. This was a great tip that a subscriber shared. Roll the template into a tube, put that in the hole of your pillow, and put your stuffing down here. It will hold the opening round, make the job faster, and a lot less messy. Applique shapes. Cut the template plastic to the size that you need. Cut your fabric 1 8 to 3 16 larger than your template. Then wrap your fabric over the edges of the template. Finger press it to make it conform to the shape. Then sew. For some of us that use wire racking, sometimes you have things that just fall through the cracks. A piece of cardboard or plastic will keep the shell flat so you don't lose anything. So many subscribers shared this one with me. Take template plastic, cut it into the shape of the bottom of the bag. Now you can insert it while you're constructing it, or you can just simply put it 
in the bottom of the bag. This will give the bag more structure and strength. Well, that's my 10. Let me know in the comments below whether you've got any more. Don't forget to check out my dollar store hacks and five sewing hacks with masking tape. I'll put links to both of them in the notes below. If you like these tips, please show your appreciation by hitting that subscribe button. There's a bell there. Click that if you want YouTube to notify you when I make new videos. You can also subscribe by clicking on this button at any time during the video or on my headshot on the end screen. You can download all my free stash buster patterns from my website, Just Get It Done Quilts. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. Take care, and I'll see you next time.